Hey folks, Brandon Noto from emsbasics.com. I want to show you a few tricks that you can pull off with just a regular blood pressure cuff like you probably have on your ambulance. Things other than taking a blood pressure. So the first one is a trick for measuring the airway pressures you're creating as you bag with a BVM. And we talked about this in our, uh, in our airway articles, but in most cases with an unconscious apneic person, you don't really want to exceed maybe about 20 centimeters of mercury of pressure with positive pressure ventilation. Otherwise, you're probably going to end up exceeding the tone of the lower esophageal sphincter and bagging their stomach instead of their lungs. Now, I, I can say this, but most people don't know how much pressure 20 centimeters of water is. So as an educational tool, it can be nice to be able to measure the pressures you create as you bag. I would never do this in the field, but if you're teaching, I think that can be nice. And there are more expensive tools you can do to, to pull this off, but it's also possible with just a regular blood pressure cuff and a regular BVM. So all you gotta do, take your BVM, go to the oxygen tubing. This is where you would connect the supplemental oxygen. And this will usually come off. You end up with just a regular piece of O2 tubing with a two female ends. Now, go to your blood pressure cuff, go to the gauge, and pull it off of the rubber. Usually it's just a flange and it'll pull right out. Take the gauge and plug it into your oxygen tubing. All right, now your BVM. We're gonna take this, we're gonna remove the mask, and what you need is a pocket mask. These are the same kind of thing you get uh, issued in CPR class so you can do mouth to mouth without putting your mouth on anybody. And it's the same sort of mask that you use on a BVM with a few differences. Usually it's built a little different. This one has a uh, uh, elastic to keep it on the head. And the important part is there is an inlet, an O2 uh, inlet valve, a little nipple on the side here, to provide supplemental oxygen as you give mouth to mask, or mask to mouth. But if you remove usually a filter of some kind, it should fit onto your BVM. Just like the original mask. Now, you're going to take that mask and you're going to plug your oxygen tubing into the inlet. Alright, so what do we have now? We have a BVM with a tube running from the mask to a pressure gauge. Now, if we bag, and I'm going to show you just bagging on the table here, we can actually measure the pressures that we're creating. I'll show you on my face here so you can get a little bit of a better look. So it's really just uh, the same sort of mechanism it's performing in the cuff, but for a different purpose. Now, these gauges display pressure in millimeters of mercury. And when we talk about airway pressures, most literature uses centimeters of water, just for various reasons. But since the unit is different, you have to actually convert those. And if we're going to say our goal is maybe 20 centimeters of water or pressure, maybe 15 to 20, that's going to come out to maybe 11 to 14 millimeters of mercury. So you'll notice on here, it only goes down to 20. So if we want to mark off maybe 11 or 14, we're going to have to do it ourselves. And a, a black face is not good for this, but a white one, you can just use a pen. So I would go in here. Uh, space it off, just go halfway between 20 and 0 to mark 10 and halfway between those to mark 15 and mark with something visible your target. That way when your students go to bag they can squeeze for that, that line and they know if they go much beyond it it's too much pressure. So they can start to get that sense of what's a lot and what's not too much. So that's how I would do it. It is up to you. Again, I would never try to pull this in the field 
but when you got a, a class full of new EMT students maybe and you're talking about why not to squeeze too hard I think it could be a good trick so give it a shot only caveat is these uh, these pocket masks are similar to the mask on the BVM, but they're not the same. Uh, the main difference is that this this material is not rigid plastic like on the BVM. It's actually soft, so you can uh, you can fold it inward for storage, which means that it's hard to kind of get your usual airway grip, an EC or a two-handed grip, because there's nothing to push on. There's no little ledge here, so I wouldn't use this for all of your airway training, but at least for one exercise to talk about pressures. So, trick number two, using your blood pressure cuff as a tourniquet. And honestly, this is probably the best tourniquet you have on an ambulance, unless you have a commercially built one such as the military uses. You can create one out of a triangular bandage or whatever, but it can actually be tough to really get one that works with high pressures. So, these work real good. All you gotta do is apply it to the limb proximal to the injury. So now if I'm uh, spurting from here, apply it up here. Same sort of deal as when you're taking a pressure, but you're going to inflate until the bleeding is controlled. So that's your end point, when the bleeding slows and stops from the injury. Now you can actually look at the pressure on the gauge. Um, if you start to get pressures like 250 or upwards of there, and the bleeding is not controlled, something is wrong, because that's ridiculous. Uh, make sure that your tubes are not kinked or anything like that. But once you control the bleeding, take a look at the pressure, see how much it is so you know if it's leaked. And we don't want it to do that because a tourniquet that's leaking is worse than no tourniquet at all. So what I would do, because these do tend to leak, and usually it's from these connections where the, the rubber plugs into the bulb or into the gauge, take your tube and just knot it off. Just a regular knot and then pull, pull, pull until it is tight and locked down. And you can do this with some force. And once you do it, it'll be a real pain to get out again because the rubber is stretchy. But once you've done that, there's really nowhere to leak from. So it should be pretty secure. And the last thing I would do is don't just leave this dangling around on only the Velcro because maybe it gets snagged on something and it pulls off. I would probably wrap some tape around here to make sure that it's going to stay put. Don't go crazy with it because at some point someone's going to have to remove this and it doesn't, you don't want to be an obstacle. But make sure it doesn't walk off on you. And traditionally you would write the, the time the tourniquet was applied and just make sure that everybody you hand the patient off to knows that tourniquet is there, especially if there's a lot of other things going on. You don't want to forget about it and six hours later people figure out that there's no perfusion to the arm. So, last trick. Sort of similar, but what I found this useful for is patients who are backboarded and maybe you're having some back pain and you want to fill some of those voids, especially the lumbar space. But once they're already on the board, it can be tough to get anything in there like a towel or a blanket. So what you can do is take your cuff, roll it or fold it so it's flat and just slide it into that space and it should fit because it's flat. And all you got to do is inflate it as you did before. And in this case, unlike the tourniquet where you were inflating until the bleeding was controlled, here we're inflating until they're comfortable. So squeeze, squeeze, and once they're in a good place, lock it off. And again, I would knot that tube so it doesn't lose pressure on you, which wouldn't be the end of the world in this case, but it would be uncomfortable. So get it in there, inflate it to your comfort, lock it off, and then later when they're off the board, hopefully you can reclaim the cuff. So three tricks, using uh, the gauge from a cuff to measure airway pressures, using the cuff as a tourniquet, and using it as a pillow. Things to try out. Let me know if you have any questions. BrandonOdoEMSBasics.com.